fix it shop today. Um, I've got my HP 35665A uh, dynamic signal analyzer on the bench, and um, I just love this thing. It's just a, it's just cool, right? And um, it's cool that you know it's old enough that I can afford it, but it still has all this great functionality. But one of the things it doesn't have is the sign sweep, and so what it can do is it can take uh, uh, white noise, which is, you know, frequencies all through the spectrum, pump that into a device, but then plot out, you know, how well that device is amplifying that white noise. But one thing that's really nice is be able to sweep a sine wave across the device and then plot uh, the device's response. So like when I was looking at that amplifier in a previous, um, the, the two-base amplifier in a previous video, that I'd be able to kind of look at that, not with the white noise, but just kind of sweeping gradually over the, the range. And um, so this guy's supposed to be able to do it, but the option is not enabled. So what I did is I found a place that actually programs, takes your serial number, takes the, uh, uh, the and writes a, an EEPROM that you can plug into this device and it enables those options. So that's what I did. It was about 60 bucks, kind of a lot, but I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, oh, I can program my own chip. And then I started thinking about what I usually do, which is think, oh yeah, I'll do this. It'll be easy. I'll, it'll be fun to figure out. And then I ended up spending a bunch of money on all these different t tools that I don't use. And I know, I mean, that's what I do, but I decided this time to just buy the chip and uh, install it, and then while I'm installing it, I'm also gonna put the battery in. So this video, I don't think it's gonna be very long, because it's just gonna be me replacing the chip that's in there with a new chip, putting in a new battery, and then just kind of demoing how that, that option works. But uh, yeah, if you think you'll find it interesting, hang on, and uh, let's do it. Okay, so for for this job, I'm just gonna, I got the, the installation notes on the memory upgrade. And I'm just going to be going using that um, uh, to figure out how to do this. But all right, we're going to start by uh, pulling off these side handles. And it's a T10, I believe. I never, I never noticed before that they've got these fancy uh, deals for vision aiding. Ugh. This thing weighs a ton. Oh, that one's loose. I think we've got these guys here. They've got the HP Goodhouse Peak Keeping Seal. On them, so I'm going to break the seal, wreck the warranty. Yeah. Nope, one more.
Okay, so we're going to want to pull this screw, this screw, and this screw. This screw goes into the back of the power supply. These two uh, connect to this plate, right? And then we want to pull all ten of these screws here. And then this plate will come off. Alright, now I think we can take this. It says to just flip it up. Which we did. Oh, that's nice. Wow, that's cool. So there's, I think this is our board here, right? And here you can see, here's the memory chips that um, I think you could populate if you wanted to get the higher memory uh, option. Okay, and that's pretty easy to take out. Stuff is so fun to work on because it's so high quality. Oh, there it is. Very cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to start pulling all these screws out that hold this board in. So there's something holding it in from the front. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to pull this power supply off.
maybe these two screws under here? Uh, I don't know if we'll get that lucky. Wow, that was it. Okay, so can this come out? That looks like it right there. Um. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, so I think we just pull that and put the other one in. All right, so I think now it's just a uh, reassembly. All right, we're alive. Um, let's, <laughs> so, so swept sign right there. Okay, so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna put it all back together. Seems like that connector on the back of the power supply a little dicey, but okay, I'm going to put it back together. All right, so here we're just going to do a little test. I have this <coughs> RCA uh, tube amp, and uh, we just want to characterize its frequency response. And um, <coughs> so I have it hooked up to the signal analyzer. And let's go over there. Okay, so we want to go to our inst mode, swept sign, and I always got to, they have cheat sheets for you, I always have to look at them. And our source, uh, we want our level to be about 30 millivolts RMS. And um, so you see up here, I don't know if you can see it because the camera kind of makes it hard to see, but it's walking through the frequency. So one kilohertz, two, three. Oops. 
Yeah, so that, look, that looks great. So I'm going to change my scale to auto scale off. And I'm going to go three. Right, and then Yeah, so pretty flat, right? Um, but you can really see I'm kind of trebly here. What's this here? But no, I'm pretty happy. I mean, for this tube amp, it looks pretty good. <clears throat> Let's turn up the Let's put the tone over to bass. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah, this works great. And then, um, so, okay, so that's what I really wanted is I wanted the sign function. But then also if we go to system utility, uh, we can see we've got the clock up here. I set the time, it works great. Um, so the real time clock is working now that we have the battery. And uh, yeah, and let's look at the option setup. We can see now that we've got all the different options uh, except the eight megabytes total. And for that, you need to install some memory. And um, yeah. Well, thanks for joining me as I kind of went through kind of upgrading the options on the signal analyzer. It's kind of fun. I think it's kind of fun working on this old equipment and um, that was so top of the line in its time. It's so well built and thought out and um, really meant to last, right? And so... It's fun working on it, and um, uh, that swept sign is really going to help me characterize, you know, how these audio devices are working, right? You know, so now you can not only see, like, the distortion, but you can also see how the tone stacks are really affecting the, the output. And I could do that before with that. That's primarily why I bought it. But I think the swept sign works even better than the, um, the other filter analysis that they they have you do so yeah it was fun and um so if you liked it please hit like and subscribe and thanks for watching